Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the first video in a short little example series on using Markov models for cost effectiveness analysis. Uh, this is going to be a technical introduction to the material where we're going to be talking about how we use these Markov models in health technology assessment. Let's go. So how are Markov models used in cost effectiveness analysis? Often the period of analysis for which we're conducting our economic evaluation over is one where significant health events repeat multiple times. This is where Markov models come into play, in which we care about the movement between health states. It should be noted that though our model structure changes when compared to a standard decision tree, our solution concept which determines if a technology is effective does not, i.e. the case where our ice are calculated from this must be below us, our threshold or our technology has a positive net monetary benefit or net health benefit. This video may make the actual implementation of Markov models and cost effectiveness analysis seem more complex than it actually is. However, this is done with the hope of providing an appropriate theoretical background in this material. Note that we won't go and get into the actual theory in terms of the math behind Markov processes in terms of what they are. Rather, we'll be talking about how we can implement them in the context of health technology assessment. So a Markov model looks like this one here, where we start out at a decision node and we either move into one process or into another. In this case, we're going to suppose we're interested in evaluating the cost effectiveness of a new drug for patients post stroke. Different drugs have different side effects and different effectiveness. Uh, at different you know states as such we're going to have completely different transition models associated with them however the structure of each of them are going to be the same though this isn't always true the entire model is given as follows with our base case going to be in the red and is going to be at the bottom here and our alternative case that being of the new drug is going to be in blue now this looks like some great artwork, but we need to keep in mind what we want to go and get out from this model. We need to go and get our, our lifetime present benefits from the new drugs, our lifetime present benefits from the current drug, the lifetime present costs from the new drug, and the lifetime present costs from the current drug. This is extremely important for going and calculating our ICERs, because remember, our solution concept does not change. Now the output that you should go and get from this is going to be a sum of present values that you're going to go and get here. So this is what we have here for our benefits that we go and we have here, um, where our V term is going to be a expected value, right, of each particular state that we go and we have as communicated by this V term here, right? And you should go and just get out a constant spinning out here. The costs here are going to be interesting where this DC term, right, in each one of these equations, right, that's going to be your decision cost that you have associated with each decision that you go and you have. And these K terms here, those are going to be your expected costs associated with them. Um, now, one thing that you should go and note is that in each of these problems, right, we're going to assume that the discount factor applied to your utilities is going to be the same as the ones applied to your costs. I just circled those in reverse, but we want to keep these two in mind here. So from these, we're able to go and pull out our values for our benefits in each one of these equations, our costs in each one of these equations and now we are ready to go now just to go and simplify whatever we did back there this is just the slide that goes and you know summarizes this that's all now in terms of solving this problem we produce a ce ratio right we produce an icer um if this value lambda is below a particular threshold lambda bar we have a cost effective technology Right, so you know our story ends here. Um, to rule out concerns of you know negative ratios, you know the standard practice is to either use the net monetary benefit or net health benefit equations. You can pick either one of those, and they just have to be greater than or equal to zero. I hope to make a video where we work through these calculations um, in Excel. So we're going to actually implement uh, a couple of models in Excel, and I'm going to go and show you guys 
how to go and calculate this. So that's uh, a wrap and that's really just a basic overview on the theory behind Markov models for cost effectiveness analysis. They're not any different from using decision trees, just that you have to worry about going and running your Markov simulation a certain number of times. So I hope this video helps. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.